All right, guys, welcome, welcome back to see, always, hey, <laughs> hey, the worst part about these podcasts is starting them. They're yeah, always yeah. the most awkward. Yeah, yeah. And then I try to remember which season and episode it is, oh, and gotcha. then we, we refer to check the title. <laughs> I don't have Welcome a clue. Welcome to this season and this episode. This season, this episode, <laughs> we're going to make the best out of it like we always do. We're still in Florida. Yep. We, uh, I think the last podcast we did was with Ryan, Mr. Dig. Have you ever seen his channel? Mm, I don't know about that You need that to one. check it out. It's yeah, pretty, okay, it's yeah. pretty legit. So, yeah. anyways, we got Hank from Hamiltonville Farms. Yep. Are we going to talk about the other channel? We can if you want. So you got multiple channels. I do. You're like serious big time YouTuber and no. I'm like Mr. <laughs> Wannabe over here. So. <laughs> But uh, you and I met, I think you reached out to me maybe three years ago? It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, we've crossed paths a few different times. I know mm -hmm. we've been, uh, well, you did the one meet and greet with us up in mm -hmm. Louisville. I did. And then uh, we had farm show stuff. Yep. A few other things. Yep. The funniest part was I tried to do a podcast with you two years ago. Yeah. I'm like, Hank, man, I'm in Florida. Come on over. You're like, <laughs> dude, you're on the other it's end of the state. state. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. you're five hours away. That's probably yeah. not going to work. So. Yeah. Anyways, this is not about me. This is about you. Well, I appreciate it. Glad to be here. So I don't know, like I said, me and you've known each other for, we've talked off and on for three or four years yeah, now. We right. have yeah. to kind of yeah. uh, compare some notes, I guess. That's right. Yeah. But uh, I don't know a whole lot about you. So you're obviously down here in Florida. I mean, did you grow up in Florida? What was no, just, yeah. what, what was the beginning that got you to where you're at? Yeah, so we, uh, I was born and raised in North Carolina, outside of Charlotte. North and then, Carolina? Yeah. See, I learned something new all the Listen, time. Like, you believe, I'm a Tar Heel man. And then, uh, <laughs> no wonder you and Chris get along that's so That's right, that's all right. But uh, joined the Air Force, spent 26 years in the Air Force, and then when uh, my last so, couple of years. So was anybody in your family in the Air Force? What was it? My brother. Your, your brother. brother? Yeah, so I wanted, my brother joined a year before I did. I'm assuming older. He is, and I wanted to be like my big brother. And so I joined because everything my big brother did, I wanted to do. So like uh, growing up, I mean, like now you're 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 kind of into the mechanical and the wheel and start and the farming and the tractors. I mean, what was the interest growing up? Was that were, uh, were you a sports guy? Or were you out there playing? I mean, video games probably wasn't. Yeah, no, yeah. Pac-Man. No, that's all right. <laughs> but no, I mean, what was? What I mean, was... I took automotive in in, in high school. Gotcha. Uh, I took two years of automotive in high school, and then um, and, and that was it. You know, so I, I didn't. I've always been interested in it, but I've never been around it. So what was the, so was Air Force always the career? Was that what you always, like, was that always the end goal, or did you have it, everything in mind? No, I, uh, I wanted to be a truck driver, because my dad was a truck driver. Really? And so, so was he owner-operator? No, Yellow Freight. Really? Yeah, he drove for Yellow Freight for a long time before they brought out roadway and all that stuff. Yeah. You know? And so I was like, well, I'm going to be a, I want to be a, a Tractor trailer driver, truck driver. And uh, well, my brother joined the Air Force and I wanted to be like my big brother. And so I went to the Air Force recruiter and I said, hey, will you guarantee me that I can drive trucks in the Air Force? And he was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever so, you need to know, yeah. man. So uh, I mean, big sucker born every minute. Yeah, right? yeah. So I started driving tractor trailers for the Air Force for four years and then cross trained into, I was a drill sergeant for five years. So you did get to drive trucks in the I airport. did. I did it for really? four years, yeah. Really? So, but when I got off of the, the bus at boot camp, the, the drill sergeant yelled at me, obviously. You know, that's what so you enlisted me. straight out of high school? Uh, uh, almost, yeah. yeah. I did a little bit of auditing and stuff, but pretty much, yeah. And, uh, but that drill sergeant started yelling at me, and I said, I want to be that guy. Really? Yeah, and so you can, the Air Force makes you wait a, a certain amount of time before you can apply to be a drill sergeant. And so I did my four years, and then I applied to be a drill sergeant. They accepted me. I stayed there for five years, and then I got commissioned as an officer, as a second lieutenant, and did um, command and control stuff. So I'm going I'm to I'm take us off the rails here just because I'm curious. Yeah, First yeah, off, yeah. thank you for your service. Oh, yeah, man. Beats working for a living is what I tell people. Well, there's a... Uh... <laughs> I have no idea what that job entails, but I know enough to know I couldn't do it. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm very, very, very appreciative yeah. of the people that do. Uh, but with that being said, I mean, I know, I know a lot of people like yourself, and what's hard to explain to people, and, and I don't know if you can, but your guys' training and culture within yeah. that, that community, is that a good way to put sure. it? Is, um, Something I don't think civilians understand about right. how you guys got each other's back, how you respect each other, how rank is mm -hmm. uh, respected. Yep. Um, 
I, that's uh, it's a whole it's a whole different type of world, and and I think a lot of people look at it as bad, maybe. But I think we need some of that structure yeah, in society. Yeah, no, it's very structured, uh, and it's very um, it's very rewarding knowing that you've got uh, some good leaders, right? You know, and some good followers, right? So as you progress up the chain. You know, you you know who your go-to guys are. But one thing that I know, one thing I want to point out, and I I know I'm not doing a good job of explaining this, is you've got your ranks Mm -hmm. and you've got your leaders and your followers, but the followers aren't looked down on. That's right. That's their level. That's right, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I wish we could, I I feel like sometimes, and I'm getting way off in the weeds here, but sometimes, sometimes as society... We, we blur those lines so much yeah. that, you know, some people are rewarded when they shouldn't. Some people should get rewarded aren't. Right. And I'm not, and I'm saying we could all have our rewards, but on our own level and still yeah. get what we want. Well, it's not an equal, it's not equality. You right. know what I mean? And it ain't, it ain't designed to be that way. But, but the, you should treat the CEO and the janitor the same way. Exactly. You know, but that, that janitor knows, hey, my job is to sweep the hallways, mop right. the floors. And the CEO knows my job is to get a, uh, you know, keep us in the black. Even though their paychecks and their responsibilities are different, the way you treat them that's is correct. the exact same. That's and I, and I, that's a good way to put it. And yeah. that's, that's one thing my grandpa's always instilled in me is it don't matter who that's it right. is, that's right. where they're at. They're still a human being you treat them with respect. That's right. And uh, I, like I said, I'm getting this way off in the weeds here. <laughs> but it's, a, you know, it's 26 years and I did, uh, I loved every, uh, but the, it's tough as far as, I did 280 days away from home every year for like 10 years straight. So 26 years, yeah. a lot of people, I don't know, you may know the percentage, they go in for four years, get to four years and they're out. Right. So did you go in planning on it being a career? No, not really, but I'm telling you, I loved it. Yeah. You know, as soon as I got, I liked being a truck driver, obviously, because, you know, I was like following in the footsteps of my dad. Then I got the job as a drill sergeant, and that was my cup of tea, man. I, I mean, I like yelling at people, you know? And uh, <laughs> he gives you a big power trip, you know? And uh, so I did that, and then it's just, it's built into your DNA to try to be the best that you can be, right? And right. so, you know. Well, I think you're pushed to be the best you can be, right? Yeah, it is, and uh, you are. And, uh, and so you're like, well, I can get my degree and become an officer because in, in the Air Force, you have to have a bachelor, a four-year degree to get, become a commissioned officer. And so we finished that up and, and got commissioned. And then you started doing some, as a commissioned officer, you start to get a lot more responsibility, a lot more. Um, uh, Managerial duties. Yeah, leadership you know? roles and things like that. And it was, it was pretty awesome. So during this time, was your, how long did your brother stay in? I'm sorry. How we, long did your brother he stay He did 30. He did 30 yeah, years? he did 30 years, yeah. Holy so, cow. He actually retired after me, you know. He went in before me and retired after me. But so he basically did one more tour, is that That's what? it, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. So So did you guys ever cross paths? Or? One time, we almost crossed really? paths. Really? Yeah, so he, because uh, I deployed all the time. I had 16 deployments in my career, right? Gosh. And, uh, well, he deployed. Thank you again. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was fun, I guess. But uh, he deployed to the same location that I was deploying, and my my trip was supposed to be I don't know let's just say January I can't remember right. the dates and he left like in December and really I, yeah, so you guys just this, missed this. it I was like doggone it man that would been pretty cool yeah you know? I'm so, assuming you and your brother are still pretty close oh yeah very much so yeah yeah, yeah. thirty years so what was his uh, not he was a cop he was a cop yeah so he, he was, the whole thirty years he was a cop whole thirty yeah. years yeah I think some people assume Air Force they'll automatically assume you're doing something with a plane and yeah that's, that's not, right there's yeah. a lot of other stuff that goes <laughs> yeah. goes along with it so. Anyways, back to you. So basically, you work your way up through the ranks. So how far? How far did you go? Uh, lieutenant Colonel. Yeah, really? Yeah, I did retire to Lieutenant Colonel. So, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to meet my 06 board for another three or four years. And I was like, I don't know, I'm good. Just kind of felt like it run its course. That's and it right. Was time, yeah. to, time to get out. Yeah. So that was the deciding factor to, I guess, is retire the right word. Yeah, I retired. Uh, I don't know how political you want to get, but this was the Trump-Hillary thing, and to be honest with you, I didn't want to. I, th- I bought into the fact that I thought Hillary was going to win, and I didn't want to. Didn't want to be underneath that right, leadership. Yeah. yeah. So. I think that's. I mean, we don't get too political on this, but that's a fair enough statement. Yeah. I, I've I've heard that. Yeah. Several times before, and I think it happened again a few years later. Yeah. <laughs> it. Uh, but it another driving factor was at, at about my twenty. Four year mark, somewhere around in there, we had grandbabies. 
Oh yeah. And so, and they lived about an hour and a half away from me. And so that will change. Priorities change. Your priorities change. So priorities we, change, we yeah. got out and stayed close to the grandbabies. Yeah, no, I can't blame you. I can't blame you on that for sure too. Mm-hmm. You know, the other thing before we get too far off on this, a lot of people want to focus on the negatives of deployment. Right. But I mean, you guys, I mean, I know a lot of people in the military. You guys got to see some really cool stuff. I've been to 26 countries. Visit a lot of cool places. Visit a lot of cool places. And I know you've been in some bad places, but there is equally as many good yeah. good places and good oh, opportunities. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, uh, I did a four-month stint in Cyprus on the really? Mediterranean Sea there, you know, and it was... Uh, I was water skiing in 80 foot deep water. You know, you could see the bottom. It was awesome, you know. It's crazy. So, rough life. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the, was the beginning the hardest or the end of the hardest or the middle of the hardest? Or did it? Uh, probably the middle. Really? Yeah, probably the middle because the- I guess you're kind of making that decision of whether like, you to stick with it or right. get out yeah. and go civilian. And you start getting, uh, as you, you know, in the middle, you're starting to get more rank, more responsibility. So your decisions matter more. Gotcha. You know, so in the beginning where you're just driving a truck, you're like, I just got to get from point A point to point, point B yeah, with just, the cargo, you yeah. know, and don't wreck. Yeah. And so now I'm making decisions, you know, that- as, as a drill sergeant, I could, you know, recommend that my commander either kick a guy out or keep a guy in. And then as a commissioned officer, you know, I could literally, as I got up to rank in 05 and all that, I had the authority to literally separate people from the military, you know. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's it, it, it's big stuff. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Decisions that can't be taken lightly and you're affecting people's lives. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. so, all right. Well, let's, let's, switch, let's switch gears here. So, 05, you... Uh, you re you retire. Yeah. You're enjoying the big life, got the million dollar home. <laughs> hey, listen, the yacht. It's, <laughs> it's big, big, big time. Now. Big time. So I went, I'll tell you what we did after we got. Uh, well, some, it's somewhere in all this craziness, you got from North Carolina to Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, after I joined the military, I never went never went back to North, North Carolina. Carolina. So, that, so that was the end of North Carolina. That was the end of North Carolina. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I always, well, I was stationed in Texas for a while, and I was like, man, I want to live in Texas. And then, but then I got to Florida, and I was like, I love Florida. Love Florida. So what? Second choice is Texas. I'm not going to try to pick on your state here, <laughs> but if you don't like sunshine and stand, you might as well get the heck out of here. That's all we got, bro. <laughs> That's all we got. I guess I haven't reached the age yet yeah, to where yeah. I enjoy those two things. That's but right. Yeah. I like a little shade and a little dirt. That's right. <laughs> you yeah. know, because you got yeah. the sunshine and the sand yeah. out the wazoo down here. So, uh, so My water table is like, you know, 12 inches or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> ponds are guaranteed to hold water because it is the water table, but... No, I mean, I come down here every year to Florida to the auctions, but my wife and all that, want to come down here to the beaches, and that is just not, yeah. it's not me, you know? Yeah, I'm not yeah. a big outdoors guy as far as, like, fishing and hunting and right, right. stuff like that, but... Uh, yeah, anyways, and Florida's a bigger state than a lot of people realize. Yeah, well, I live in lower Alabama. I mean, yeah. that's basically, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So we're in the panhandle of Florida. And you're what, about 30 minutes from the coast? Yeah, I'm, I'm 38 miles to the water, and I'm 38 miles to the Alabama border. Alabama border, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, literally my house is dead. Right center, there in the right. center, yeah. so. so. But anyways, yeah, you re- so you retired, got the homestead. You live on a pretty decent little chunk of property up there. Yeah, right? we got 75 acres, I mean, which is good for us, yeah. you know what I mean? So not compared to some of these north, north northern guys that's got, you know, thousands of acres. Yeah, well, that's not me either. I'm going to for you. I know people got that much yeah, love. Yeah. It's not me. Same thing. So where do we, so whenever you get out of the military, like how do you start transitioning? Like are you are you looking? I'm just I'm sorry I'm being nosy here, no, but I'm just yeah. kind of curious. But are you looking for employment? Or are you just like uh, like taking a deep breath, like I'm free of responsibility yeah. and stuff like that? Or so we the the reason we ended up in rural the rural county that we're in is because I took a job as the county administrator, and so I went straight. So you go from one government deal to another. Yeah, local government, you know, and it's. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot more politics in that one, isn't oh, there? <laughs> I've been there done a little bit of that myself. I can, I can speak with the experience on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it went so the the county commissioners were my boss. Yeah. I, I was the you know I was not elected, but the five elected guys. So were you my were boss. appointed by them. That's correct. Yeah. 
And three of them liked me, two of them didn't. Sounds about right. And two, those two guys made my life miserable. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I remember coming home from work, and I told my wife, I said, I'm 48 years old. You know, I'm not, don't talk to me like I'm a 12-year-old. Yeah. You know, and so, and I wasn't used to that in the military. Well, and, well, and that was, you know, I was getting ready to say, especially coming out of the military, when yeah. you got that rank respect right. thing. Here right. we go right now, blurring the lines. That's right. Yeah. You know, for personal gain or whatsoever. But, you know, back home, I'm... Um, me and uh, Farmer Chris are fairly heavily involved in local politics. Neither one of us are elected officials. Right. And everybody wants us to run for Of course. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Not being elected, I don't have to play by certain yeah. rules. That's right. And then I can go wherever I need to be a pain in somebody's butt to get what I need to done. Sure. And yeah. then whenever I get yeah. what I want yeah. or, or fix, push what issue we want to, I'll pack up and go home and tell yeah. me it again, you know? Yeah, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a different world, ain't it? It is, and it, you know what, it is a completely different world, but it really frustrates me sometimes how uneducated people are about how even their local government oh, yeah. operates. Yeah, 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 for sure. They want to get on social media and have all these opinions about how stupid they are because they should just do X, Y, and Z, when in reality, X, Y, and Z is not even an option. That's right. Yeah. Like, it's, it's oh, not, that, <laughs> not that simple. So, so county administrator, like, what was, were you inspector, auditor, what was the... So I, basically, I was like the county commander, right? I, I, all, all the county departments were under my authority, so I had public works. So you're the in-between guy between the commissioners and all the leader, all the, the, like, the chief of police or That's sheriff. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the sheriff, well, the sheriff's a separate entity, obviously, but we controlled his budget, or we uh, authorized his budget, budget and right, things right. like that. But um, supervisor of elections, uh, what some more, some more elections. So the, ca- the county. I'm assuming your county government's like ours. It's broken into different departments. Yeah. So basically, you were the guy all the departments answered to. That's correct. And then you took it to the commissioners. That's which right. Yeah. Run, yeah. yeah so, that's how it worked. Yeah. yeah. Well, back home, we got a similar system. We go through county. Uh, we got county council, county commissioners. Yeah, yeah. So the county council kind of sets the budget and yeah, yeah, and goes all that. So. But it was. I mean, it was. It was a good learning experience because I was never involved in local politics. You right. know, but you know. So <laughs> you can say it was a good experience. Yeah. You, know, good, you say it was an experience. I, I, I tell you. I tell you what. Though, on a serious note, I love that job for the people. Yeah. I, I like. I love helping people. Yep. And so I was able to help a lot of people, and I met a lot of people. I, yeah. I met a lot of important people in our in our area. All right. Mm-hmm. And so, did you find it funny that the most influential and important people are people you didn't even know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They just. I mean, you know, you would have a commissioner say, well, "Won't you go talk to so and so about this?" You know what I mean? You get your answer. You yeah. know. So for sure, one hundred percent. The people who get crap done are the people's names you never hear. That's right. That's a that is a true statement. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I, it, but like I say, I did that and I only did it for a year and a half because I, I just couldn't handle yeah. some of the stuff that was coming down the pipe, you know? So, so, uh, after, uh, after your County commissioner job or County commander job, uh, is this when we sit on the couch and don't do anything? <laughs> yes. Until hurricane Michael. Hurricane Michael. So what year did Hurricane 2018, Michael? 2018, October 2018. So that's a pretty good little span in there. So, yeah, uh, not when you said 05, I actually, I retired in 16 as an 05. Ah, oh, gotcha. Yeah, I'm gr- sorry, I'm my sorry. My grade was an 05. Gotcha. Our rank was an 05. But, uh, um, yeah, so I retired in 16, and then I left June or July of 18. Uh, the I left the county in July of 18. And then Hurricane Michael hit all, uh, October of 18. Gotcha. And so... Uh, and Hurricane Michael, if I remember, it covered well, out the panhandle there, didn't it? it yeah, yeah. And it it was, ended up hitting as a Category 4, but five. it was... Oh, yeah, and then it was upgraded to 5. 5, yeah. because it was kind of odd because it got upgraded after it hit land, didn't it? it yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was... Uh, it was crazy because it hit... Uh, it was like a Category 1 or 2, like just... A mile off the coast, yeah. and then it just went. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I kind of basically, I, I briefly remember that, but I got family lives fairly close to yeah. you, All right? And uh, I remember that got hit pretty hard as well because it was everybody thought it was just going to be a run of the mill one and That's a half right. or two. That's right. Yeah. And then uh, it actually got upgraded to a category five after it made landfall, and then it just sat there. Dude, it was horrible. Yeah. It, I mean, it was horrible. It was. Uh, so was that your first like big hurricane experience in Florida? In Florida, yeah. I went to Hugo as a as a kid in North Carolina, but the uh, yeah as as a because we went through one in two thousand in Florida, but it was 
there was nothing. Right. So I think it was Ivan maybe or something. I can't remember. Ike, was it Ike? Maybe, I can't yeah. remember. But, the, uh, but Michael, I mean, it just it destroyed our area, you know, and it was, uh, it was devastating. And so that I didn't have, now mind you, I had 75, the 75 acres that we had bought, but I didn't have a tractor. <laughs> so on the 75 acres, this is your current homestead. So you guys right. had a home there. That's right. Buildings yeah. and stuff. So how much, how much damage did you sustain to the structures? So we harvested all our timber or what har we harvested 78 loads of pine off that property before the storm. Before the storm. Yes, we are very fortunate, you know. And so... Which you also harvested a whole lot of windbreaks. <laughs> <laughs> but everything that fell, fell parallel with our house. Really? Yeah, and I had, uh, I had a, a lean-to off of a pole barn that came off. And literally that was about it. So, really? Because all my trees fell parallel and with And the house sur survived? Not at all. I mean, no, no, no. nothing to it. Whatsoever. So basically, the majority of your damage was to the actual property itself. That's not right. The, yeah. Not the yeah, whole Yeah, I mean, building. I had so many trees down. It was crazy. Yeah. And so we were very fortunate, but we were literally, I, it, I guess it's just the way the house was oriented on the property. You yeah. know what I mean? Because Some our reason. neighbors lost their roof. And I've got one, I've literally got one neighbor. And, yeah. uh, um, and she lost her roof. And but then the in town, ever you know, everybody was just destroyed in town. Yeah, so, so this is 2018. Yeah, Hurricane Michael's blowed through. You got this absolute mess out there. Yeah, and you got to clean this up. I got to clean it up. And you're trying to tell me you've owned 75 acres for a couple of years and don't have a tractor yet? <laughs> I don't have a tractor. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, uh, I was, you know, I don't know. you doing out there? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider myself a city boy, but I was definitely not a country boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know your one neighbor's yeah. over there laughing yeah, like, "You see what Hank's trying to do?" Yeah. So it, uh, well, we didn't. We were, to be honest with you, we were when I worked at the county. I mean, I was working, I was working fourteen hours a day, sixteen hours a day, yeah. and I had phones in you know both my ears all day, every day. So I didn't really do much with the property at all, you know. So you maintained what you needed to there by the house, That's and right. the rest of it was just. That's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, so you know, we didn't have. Um, we didn't really know what we were going to do with the property. Gotcha. And, and then the guys came in, they, they logged it, they took all the timber out. Now I've got this, look like a bomb went off. Yeah. And so I've got, to, I said, well, I've got to do something. And we're trying to figure out what we're doing to get it cleaned up. And my father-in-law, he has a lot of equipment, dozers and backhoes and things like that. And so we was like, well, we'll get him over here to help us clean it up. Well, then the storm hit, you know, so... It, uh, and the storm didn't help the mess situation. Oh my gosh, it was it was bad. It was really really bad. Um, so this is this is the beginning of Hamiltonville Farms. That's it. The whole yeah. nine yards right here. That's so it. Uh, you make a decision to go out and buy a compact tractor. That's right. So what, what, I don't know what your first tractor was. Mahindra forty five forty. Mahindra forty five forty. So that's forty five horse tractor. That's right. Cabless. That was open station. Yeah. Open station. Yeah. Uh, loader. Yep. And you're all gung ho. You're gonna clean that 45 acres, listen, 100 and something acres. But I did buy a grapple with it. Oh know? well, at least so we got that. I did buy a grapple with it. I knew I had to do something. Did you watch? Did you watch a YouTube video? I'm sure some, I did. Some <laughs> random guy said you need a grapple for that. <laughs> now, I'm sure the salesman pit threw it in there. <laughs> but uh, so because everybody, everybody in that area bought tractors and grapples. And I, it, the best time to be a tractor salesman in the panhandle after, hundred, after was, hurricane. It was November of 2018. After hurricane. Yeah. So, because everybody was buying this. So. so, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is about the time you popped up on YouTube, isn't so it? So, it's why I popped up on YouTube. Because well, I didn't know how to drive a tractor. Right. All right. And so, I'm you're telling, telling you. all the secrets here. You know, I, I'm not, you know, the people, that's why I laugh because people well, are we should be we should be clear that your channel did not start as. Uh, a how-to drive a tractor channel. It did. Really? Yes. So my, when I got my tractor... Hey, if you're not helping your cause here, Yeah, no, listen. My, when I got my tractor, my buddy said... I, he said, what are you going to... I said, well, i got to learn how to operate this thing, right? I've never been on one. And uh, he was like, why don't you film you learning how to drive it and then make videos on putting it on YouTube on how I learned so, to drive uh, a tractor. How your buddy know about YouTube? Well, he was young, dude. I mean, you know... I'm, so he I'm, was... Yeah, he was in the... He was in the know. You gotcha. know what I mean? And I was like, what's YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Well, we made, I said, well, sure, I'll do it. And so I made tractor videos 
And uh, like, after so I always like, I always like to ask people like you're like my first videos on my channel I filmed was just with my iPhone. Yeah, same same. And and yeah. um, just with my iPhone, I think I edited them on my iPhone. Of course, you go back and watch the first videos, and you're like, holy cow, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, it's horrible. what a mess that is. But so basically, you're doing the same thing. You that's just right. pull the phone out of the pocket, start that's shooting right. some clips. And the first one I had it vertical. You know, I was like, oh, yeah. well, that's right. You're supposed to turn, turn it sideways. It yeah. yeah. So, and it was. Um, I think the one thing that's really clear about doing what you're doing is basically starting from scratch is just being transparent about right. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I do, yeah, that's exactly and right. And let's figure this out together. Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, you know, in my videos, I was always asking, it's like, hey, I, this is what I think I need to do. Leave a comment below on what yeah. I should have done different. And I learned, and I learned a lot in the yeah. comment section. Uh, but it, uh, but it was literally, it was like the third or fourth video. It's got like a thousand views. And I was like, huh. There's something to this, you know? right? And then um, let me make another one, you know. And we just luckily we picked up we picked up uh, a pretty decent following off those tractors videos fairly quickly, you know. And I, I don't know why. I guess it's just yeah. So a good that's another question everybody always asks me. Like I always tell everybody if they want to start a YouTube channel, like you can't do it for six weeks and decide where you're mm -hmm. going to be whether you're going to be good at it or not, that's or right. whether or not you're going to make it or that's not. That's right. I always, I always encourage everybody to do it for a year. Sure. If you are if you still got content available, if you're not burnt out, if you still enjoy doing it, if you're having success, yeah. keep pushing. That's right. But you at least got to do it for a year to figure it out. So what's your definition of fairly early success? Um, we had 1,000 subscribers probably in three months, maybe four months, something yeah. like that. And then I got monetized at like the nine-month mark because I hadn't got the hours yet. But, really? Yeah. See, I, just to comp I'm, we're just comparing notes here for the yeah. hell of it, but I, was, I, was, I had 1,000 subscribers in three months, and yeah. that's also when I got monetized. I had yeah. my watch hours before I got oh, my yeah. subscribers. No, I didn't have that until – I think I got my first YouTube paycheck like at my nine-month mark. Really? So, yeah. So, and I, but, you know, you don't know. I would you, say I'm doing something wrong if you pass me up. <laughs> wrong well, I mean, you know. Maybe I should start pretending like I don't know what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it works for me, right? <laughs> so, but, uh, and I think that might have been some of the draw because I was transparent, or I still am transparent. But, right. Because I don't know. I, I mean, these guys, and I tell, and I talk about this in my videos every now and again, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't, I have never stepped on an excavator until I was like 49, 50 years old. That's crazy. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, or a bulldozer. And so these people are like, oh, you're not an operator. Well, tell me something I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Duh. <laughs> Duh. Glad you watched. Yeah, thanks for watching. And so, yeah, because yeah, I'm not, but I enjoy, I enjoy the heck out of it. You yeah. know what I mean? I love, I love working on the equipment. I love operating, you know, what I can on it. You know, people, you know, still talk about how bad of a tractor operator I am. I don't think I'm a bad tractor operator, but, I mean, it's, it's a loader bucket. You know, <laughs> you know it's I'm going to get, get a little bit off subject here a little bit, but what a lot of people don't realize is our perceptions can make anything come true. Oh, yeah. yeah. And my example to that is if I say Jerry's the best dozer operator there is out there, everybody can, everybody's on board. Jerry's the best, Jerry's yeah. best there is. Yeah, yeah. If I go over here and say, Hank, you might be the best tractor operator there is, and anybody that knows what they're watching and seeing, I'm just like, Hank can't run a tractor to save his butt. Well, guess what? Yeah, that's right. I just made you the worst tractor operator that, on YouTube. That, you're exactly right. And it's that. funny how our opinions uh, get pressed onto the viewers sometimes, and I've purposely did this a few times just to see, <laughs> a just as study. a little social experiment. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, you know, I like we talked about this. I like the comment generators. Yeah, I like right. certain different things, and I'll I'll, I'll yeah. have an opinion about something or somebody that is blatantly not true. Yeah. And then you'll see it in the comments for the next six months. People are just. <laughs> it's crazy. Isn't it? it is. It's crazy. It is wild. So sometimes you. Being the self-proclaimed non-operator, yeah, people automatically are just free to jump in the comments and that's right, and, yeah. and and ridicule you or critique you or laugh all the way to the bank. Yeah, exactly. But it's <laughs> uh, it's just that's something these people don't experience on their end because they don't see right, right, everything. Right. If you yeah. look hard enough in the comments, you may be able to find it. And, and I'm not picking on anybody or anything like that. It's just more to kind of understand. People yeah. and, and yeah, the no, what you said was one hundred percent true. Yeah, so. a little bit. So it's yeah. uh, yeah. It, it's it's funny. So, anyways, um, so the tractor, you're doing the tractor stuff. Yeah, like you're going down this road, and yeah. you're having some pretty damn decent success. Got some sponsors. Got some, uh, you know, was making some money and 
getting better at the tractor and all that stuff. So I was very happy. So uh, this is another question always everybody was asking. Is it different for everybody? So as you're going down this road, uh, uh, was Homestead Implements one of your first mm -hmm. sponsors? Yeah. So did you reach out to them? They'd reach out to you? Like, just not, you don't have to go into great detail, yeah, but sure. just kind of how does that work? So they reached out to me, and I, I, I was skeptical because I'm like, uh, you know. You care to kind of state, like, roughly where you're at with subscribers and views? Oh, geez. Um... They reached out. I know when it was. It was. It was the. Sun, it was right before the Sunbelt Ag Expo in October in Moultrie, Georgia, in twenty. Um, must have been twenty eighteen. So I was. I was probably. I was probably a thousand subscribers or maybe five hundred subscribers or something like that. I can't remember because it was. It was really earlier. Maybe it was twenty nineteen. I can't. Are they a local company? Or? No, they're out of Jamestown, New York. Okay. And, okay. Uh, I can't remember. I, I knew it was before the Sunbelt Ag Expo, but I can't remember what year it was. And um, and they reached out via Facebook message, right? And they said, like, hey, we're starting a new implement company. Would you be interested in testing out some of our products? And I said, well, I'm going to an Ag Expo. I'll call you back in a couple of days. And uh, so I got back from the Ag Expo, and um, I started having conversations with them and stuff and really liked the people I was talking to. And so they actually sent me all – they were they were coming out with seven implements, so they sent me seven prototypes, and I got to field test them and all this stuff, and didn't make any didn't make any public videos on them, you know. So they was like, "What do you think about it?" I said, "Well, I would change this, I would change that." And I had some, I had a guy that uh, I had a friend that was doing some videos with me, and he was very knowledgeable in that kind of stuff. So he was like, "You know, put a gusset here, or, you right, know, right, or whatever." Right. But uh, and so he helped me kind of figure out what what I needed and they made a change or two, but they, I mean, they delivered some solid products anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Everybody that's uh, just to kind of knock some questions off. You know, a lot of people ask, well, how do you, how do you get your sponsorship deals? How do you do this? How do you do yeah. that? I have personally never went looking for a sponsor. Yeah. They've always come to me and I probably, I don't know what your situation is, I probably turned down 90% of the sponsorship opportunities sure. I get. Yeah, I turned down quite a few. Uh, because I want to be 100, I want to have control and I want transparency yeah. and I don't want my hands tied. That's right, yeah. And I feel like that gives me a whole lot more credibility. That's right, yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think that adds more value to what we're doing. Yeah. So we're sponsored by TYM. Uh, I, I say that, I shouldn't say that. We're partnered would see with TYM. TYM. There's a big a difference. Which is a tractor manufacturer. Which is a tractor manufacturer. Uh, and well before we get too far down the line, let's kind of go through the progression. So okay, Homestead sure. Implements was your first kind of deal. That's right, yeah. Uh, and then from there Branson you, picked me up. So Branson being a tractor manufacturer. That's right, yeah. And, and you got these uh, I'm comparing notes here too because you and I both got some big sponsors fairly early. That's right, yeah. Uh, which I was 6,900 subscribers when yeah. Branson picked me up. So I want to kind of turn this around to YouTubers that are maybe watching this, like how do you get where you're at? Right. So these companies, and correct me if you don't agree on this opinion, these companies are really good at looking at you, how you structure your video, and, they can, and the and engagements you have on your videos. Right. The smart ones do not care about subscribers and views. That's they care about content. They care about... Uh, they care about content and your ability to represent the brand. To present them. Yes. Yeah. And, and presenting them don't mean you have to sit there and say how great it is all yeah. the damn time. What I'm saying is they don't want you to, you know, political, any social issues. Right. They don't, don't touch right. them. Right, yeah. right. So a, a lot of times it has more to do, everybody, now, and I should say this to companies that might be watching. Yeah. Because I know some companies, all they care about is a view number. Yeah. Nah. Well, you and I can maybe get these guys 10,000 views. They can go to another channel and get a million views, but they're yeah. more likely they'll get a sale yeah. of the 10,000 people that yeah. watch us. And, view, and the smart uh, ones not realize apples that. apples apples, is it? A exactly. view is not a view. A, exactly. A view, all views are not created equal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's you, you, if, if you're a marketing department and you don't understand demographics and target demographics, then, you know, you might want to go back to marketing 101. Right. You know, so, because it, it's, it is, you have people that say, well, this guy got, you know, a million views on a video. Who cares? Like one guy's not going to, you know, of those million, 
they were all 12 year olds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and in some platforms, you can turn around and buy the views. You so can. They're, so they're, yeah. not even, they're not even true or real views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a true so, statement too. Yeah. Um, not to get too far off the subject there, but just kind of clarify the, the differences and, and why we may have been put in the situations we were because of yeah. smart marketing people. And right, right, right. they've obviously seen the return on investment because yeah. they keep... I, I, tell, I tell some of the big potential sponsors, I'm like, look, man, I'm, I'm planting seeds for you. That's, yes. that's my job. Now, my job is to plant the seed. Because in, our, in my line of work and in your line of work, it's hard to quantify a sale based on your YouTube channel. We are not selling an impulse buy. That, that's correct. Yeah, that's you know, a good way to put it. Yeah. <clears throat> we are not selling an impulse buy. What we're selling is a big ticket item. In my case, sometimes cost a quarter million dollars. Right, right. And people who make those purchases take six to eight months to make that purchase. Yep. So if you can just get your sponsor's hat thrown in the ring as yeah. a potential one on the bid sheet, yep. you've done your job as the guy sure. pushing the product. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, you may get a guy that shows up at a dealership and say, I'm, the reason I'm buying this is because I saw it on you know, Hank's or Mike's channel. Right, blah, blah, right, blah. Right, but right. that far and few between, I'm sure. Right, right. But, Most likely you're going to see a random comment, which I'm sure we screenshot. And yeah, yeah, right. See. Now, with that being said, if you guys did buy something based on this, message us <laughs> please, you know. please tell your dealer. Tell your dealer to tell their territory manager. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get our own plug in there, right? Yeah. You know, we can't, we can't let this go to waste, yeah, that's, right. that's right. Shoot. So, all right. So, anyways, the the channel's growing. The channel's growing. You get a Branson tractor dealer. Yep. And you're this is still on the Hamiltonville Farms channel. That's correct. Because I want to kind of I don't know how much detail you want to go into, sure. but eventually we we split ways here. Yeah. Um, and the channel is what probably ninety percent tractor content at this point. That's correct. Yeah. Ninety uh, percent tractor content. Uh, you're having some success with Branson. You're still dealing with Homestead Implements. Yep. Um, so somewhere on this yellow brick road, we decided to go crank up an old piece of that, equipment. Yeah, my father-in-law had a 310G that had been sitting in, on the side of a dirt road for years, five, ten years, whatever it was. And I, and, uh, I was like, well, we go crank that thing up, man. You know, and... Uh, 310G, that's not really that old of a piece of equipment. No, it wasn't. Well, that tells you everything yeah. you need to know about. Yeah. <laughs> My, my father-in-law, bless his heart, he don't even own a grease gun. You know, he's got like, he's got, he's got, you know, a quarter million dollars worth of equipment. And don't, anyway, but he, uh, so we go and we film it and I released it in like February and then like June, I started getting all these notifications and stuff and I'm like, what's going on there? And you, so as, as a YouTuber, we get a graph on views and it's like, right. a, yeah. and so that the views went, and I was like, what in the world? And so I was like, that's that 310 video. It's pushing all these views. Let's make another one, you know? Yeah. And then make another one. Make in some ways, one. sometimes you get that, that hit video and it gets addicting. It's almost like a drug. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because you're chasing views at, at early, you know, you're like that. You're, you're chasing these views. But So we started doing Will It Start videos on heavy equipment. Um, and then <laughs> and we... We've done very, very well on those for a long time. Uh, right. So they're kind of hit or miss now, I'll be honest with you. But. Well, I think it's because more people have started doing them. And, well, let's face it, Matt at Diesel Creek hogs all the views. Yeah, yeah. Matt, <laughs> quit hogging all the views. <laughs> so, you know, but, but, he's, but he's, rightfully he's, so, the dude does amazing. He videos. does, man. Yeah, Matt's a good friend. Guy. Matt's been on the podcast before, which is a really good podcast. If you guys want to go back and watch it, Matt's... Uh, yeah. Matt's just one of the good ones, man. He's a class act, dude. Yeah, what you I see like is Matt. what you get. That's right. It, it yeah. is what it is. So uh, so basically, you also had like a pouring concrete in a building video that took off too, didn't you? <laughs> so it's the worst video on YouTube, right? <laughs> it is, uh, and it took off. But it got it got picked up in some uh, like Bangladesh or something. Or okay. one of the, Bangkok or somewhere. I don't know where it was, but uh, but that just took off from there. And it's literally the worst video on YouTube. It's, there's no talking, the music horrible. Uh, it, it's just horrible. But the funny thing about that dude, 6.5 million views on that video right now. The funny thing about that is, that concrete floor uh, has one crack, it's, it's a little over two years old. It's like two and a half years old, almost three years old. It's got one crack. Is that in one of your buildings? My son-in-law. Son-in-law's Yeah, my son-in-law's uh, pole barn. And it's got a crack in it about, yay long and that's it 
in the whole shop, right? Really? And all the comments. Oh my that. gosh, yeah. dude! You didn't even put rebarb in it. It's, it's yeah. like five thousand psi or ten thousand psi fiberglass mesh or whatever. I don't know concrete, but you it know, al it always cracks me. Uh, we used to pour a bunch of concrete on the channel. We don't quite as much anymore, but. Uh, you know, all my videos, and you're, I think you're kind of on the same program I am. My videos are two and a half, maybe three months behind. Yeah. So you post a video, you're like, well, that'll never last. They'll yeah. be gone in six weeks. I'm like, well, yeah. still there. Yeah. <laughs> no. It is so funny because that, that pole barn, and he's got, I mean, he's got, he's easily got 200,000 pounds of stuff on it. You yeah. know what I mean? Just, it's crazy. And then the same thing when they, when they uh, paved my driveway, right? Yeah. Uh, they put an inch of, of pavement down. And they didn't put any base down. But oh, by the way, my road was a, a county road for, and my driveway was a county yeah, road, yeah. and it's got like a hundred years of base on it. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, I've never. I would F one, you know, a Ranger, a Ford Ranger, will put dents in that thing, or ruts in that thing. Yeah, well, we that. paved the parking lot at the market, which has got six feet of rock because it used to be a rock quarry. Yeah. But everybody's like, it'll never last. You don't have binder down. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. people. <laughs> But like you was talking about, we love spending our money. Yeah. Oh, dude, my goodness, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> what did Mister Nick said? He goes, everybody on the internet thinks I'm a gazillionaire. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy, man. You it need still to buy costs us money too. However, I do buy a lot of things based off the comments. You know what I mean? Really? So, yeah, because the you know we just bought that service truck. Well, I've had it probably a year now, but uh, that Ram 4500 I got. Uh, people will say, you should add this, you should add this to your truck, you should add that. And I'll look at some stuff and be like, you know, I could use that. You know, you know that's that's interesting because I don't know if I've ever bought a single thing yeah. based off a comment. Like, uh, Not uh, that I don't appreciate the suggestions. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just I know how my operation operates. and. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, I don't, I don't know how my operation <laughs> 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 All right, touche, fair enough. Yeah, but it's a... Uh, but I, I mean, like, uh, you know, some guys, like, uh, introduced us to, like, I didn't, of all the tools I've had, like, I didn't have a set of crow's feet. Really? You know, and I was like, huh, maybe I should get some crow's feet. They're you pretty know? cheap, too. Yeah, I know, they're pretty cheap, but I didn't, See, you know, I don't think about that They suggest stuff. you for, like, $20 stuff. They want me <laughs> yeah. to get, like, an $80,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. scraper. Yeah, I mean, I get that, too, you know, you know. And and every every piece of equipment that we, we crank, um they want us to restore it yeah you know what i mean so uh, which it's just not feasible no i mean it's 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 worth five thousand dollars in scrap yeah. you know? and, and a lot of the things unfortunately you crank have the same value running or not that's right that's exactly right you know yeah. it's it's the um it's the perspective on on what's going what's going on and it's hard my thing is too it's hard like even in a wheel start video, this will plow. Whenever I film a project, we may be there for a week and these guys may see two hours of video. Sure. So how do, can you have an opinion about the big picture mm -hmm. whenever I'm showing you such a small little piece? Yeah. I mean, don't I, get me wrong. We try to be comprehensive about what we show, but it's the same thing with the equipment. You can't show all the defects. Right, and right. All the stuck brakes and the drive shafts missing and the rear yeah. end's full of oil. And Yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it is different, but the, the good thing about it is it's it's uh it's like Dale Earnhardt said. If they're booing or cheering, they're watching. They're watching. Yeah, yeah. they're they're uh, interaction is interaction. That's and, right. And publicity. And I pre and, I, and, if, and I mean this with all sincerity, is I appreciate every one of them. Oh yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, out of the probably millions of comments I've got at this point, I've only I've only actually blocked two people. Oh, right on. No, yeah. I've, I've done a little more than that. <laughs> No, there's just a few of them that get a little too personal and just, yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah. Eh, okay, you need to move on. But the flip side of that is we have such awesome subscribers. Usually you've got some, a great community. Usually if, usually yeah. if somebody gets out of hand, yeah, yeah, they yeah. take care of it for me, no, which I got, agree. Which you've I done agree. Some, and see, I haven't, I, I haven't got that. I've got, or I haven't got that as big as you. Uh, you're, you have done an excellent job of, of building a community on your channel or around your channel. And I just... I've got a smaller community, yeah. and uh, and well, I wish I wish that I would, you know, and you see the same commenters every time, you know, and all that stuff. And you're like, okay, those are my guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. I probably got maybe 150, 200 people. I guarantee will be in comments every yeah, day. Yeah. And see something else that you and you've done a much better job than I have is like your live streams. Like you know, we've got 340,000 subscribers, uh, and I do a live stream. 
and I'll have 200 people show up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'll have 1,200 show up sometimes. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it gets to be a little much sometimes. But I appreciate each and every one of yeah, them. Yeah, of course. So back to your channel a little bit. I mean, we got this tractor channel that's chugging along pretty good. And then we, we go over here and do a wheel at start. Yeah. And those videos really start taking they off. Do. The channel, I'm going to use the word explodes. It does explode in 2021. It explodes. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think whenever you reached out to me, uh, were you maybe like right out around 100,000 subscribers? Somewhere yeah, right in there? probably. Um, and the next thing I look, you're 200,000. Yeah, you I, know. I, did a, I think I did 150,000 subs in a year. Yeah, like which that. was, that's cooking. Oh, that's cooking, yeah, that's for cooking. sure. That's yeah. moving. That, there's very few people that do that. That's that's yeah. moving along, unless you're Matt, again, at Diesel. <laughs> hey, Matt, share the subs yeah. and the views. Come button. on, Matt, give us a shout out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up poor Matt here. He's not even here to defend yeah, yeah. himself. Uh, so this created a dilemma for you, though. Yes, I had to quit, mate, I, or I... I I throttled way back on the tractor comment Be or content because you had so many will at start fans. Let's call it that. Sure, they didn't give two craps about your tractor stuff. Not at all. So I would put a will at start video out, and get you know five hundred thousand views, and then a tractor video, and it literally get fifteen thousand. You know, Fair. I'm like, golly. That's a. <laughs> I mean, not to get off subject here, but that's one thing I'm super proud about on my channel. I'm I got a range, and it. My range keeps keep creeping up, but I'm consistently somewhere between seventy and hundred thousand views. Yeah, and you know, and then it'll be between seventy five and hundred five. It just that That's it right. keeps sliding. That's and awesome. I don't have that major. Yeah, no, I, my my graph looks like an EKG. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I mean, one video will get forty thousand, the next one will get two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. you know, and it it drives me bonkers because I can't figure out why that is. You know. And uh, so, you know, you try to study what worked and what didn't, and I haven't quite cracked the nut yet. You know, if you figure it out, let us all know, because I think... <laughs> well, I think it's community. Uh, seriously, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm a goofy guy, and maybe they just don't want to watch goofy every, every video, you know? Yeah. So. I, you know, me and, me and Matt from Diesel Creek have had this conversation in depth a few different times. And I don't, he's maybe swaying my opinion a little bit. Yeah. I feel like I missed the YouTube boat by about three years. Yeah. I wish I would have started three years sooner. Yeah, sure. And I, and I feel like I would have been a lot farther. I think Chris started too early, and I think he'll tell you that too. Yeah. He's, he's been very successful through pers persistence, and then he, he caught the train. Yeah, yeah. And hiked on it. And, what, and let me elaborate on that and what I mean by a little bit is YouTube was a, in existence way before all this streaming and all these other mm -hmm. platforms and TikTok yeah. and Instagram right. Reels and Facebook and all this. So they had a content library already built and about the time that started getting popular, so did GoPros become affordable and iPhones started recording Absolutely. a lot better quality. Yeah. And YouTube just rocketed. Yeah. And I feel like I come in on the, if YouTube's popularity is going like this, I come in on the top. Yeah. I feel like right now we're still kind of staying on the top, but I feel like we're dipping a little bit because short format videos are a lot more popular mm -hmm. with small people. Yeah. Matt's argument is we got in at the right time and we're still climbing the mountain because YouTube has replaced reality TV, mm. which I do see that argument. You know, I've talked to Bobby Goodson. I've talked to um, Wade. My neighbor Wade. was on Axeman yeah. uh, yeah, through the yeah. Volvo connections. I, I have access to some of the Gold Rush people. And yes, we are in their space. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no doubt sure. in that. And to your point, being a goofy guy, I'm taking this all the way back around to you, the <laughs> comment about you being a goofy guy. We are legit reality TV. Because oh, we are yeah. not smart enough to be actors. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There is no way in hell we can stage something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Yeah. But, I, but I think it also makes us a lot more relatable because a lot of these reality yeah. TV shows got to be drama and staged yeah. and... and in way off in left field. So I'm curious what your take is. On so that. I think it's hilarious when people say, you're faking that. I'm like, Dude, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I am is. not smart enough to fake that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but no, I think it, it is. I don't, I don't have cable. I don't have satellite, right? I don't have, I don't have TV in my house. Right. I haven't had TV in my house in probably two or three years. It's always been, or in the last two or three years, it's been YouTube or some type of, you know, uh, social media type right. television program, I guess you would say. So I think it is going that way, but it's, um, I can definitely see that if maybe 2016, 
But I will say this. I think that if you were on during COVID, then you got to you were good, you know yeah. what I mean? Because people yeah. were locked in their house yeah. and all that stuff, and they were able to, they watched a lot more YouTube. That's kind of where my channel, I, a I, lot I, of it. I've just had steady growth. Yeah. So. But COVID definitely didn't hurt me. I'm not going to pretend like it did. Yeah, and that's the year I blew up, you yeah. know what I mean? So, uh, and I, I think it's because everybody was sitting at home and all Yeah, that. stuck at home and had nothing better to do than yeah. watch two goofballs on the internet. <laughs> that's fact, Jack. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think YouTube's uh, YouTube's got a place, and YouTube's very successful, and, and YouTube as a platform has been awesome to me. But I, I I feel like they got a little bit behind the times with TikTok and Shorts and stuff like that, and they and they've done a good job of kind of catching themselves back up. We need a younger audience. Yeah, uh, the, the YouTube audience is surprisingly old, older, yeah. old. Yeah, it's like YouTube and Facebook are old, old guys. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean, yeah, and uh, TikTok and Instagram and whatever the other yeah. ones are young guys but so the the thing is if you want to stay relevant you got to reinvent yourself you know what i mean and so like if i i just can't continue to do if you're not growing you're dead you know yeah. so i can't continue to keep doing will it start will it start will it start will it start i've got to figure out how to pivot and still stay in that vein but not uh, or but do something stay, different. stay in that space yeah yeah so before we before we transition into that, you've got quite the character on your channel you picked up along the way. Yeah, Wiley, <laughs> my buddy Uncle Wiley. Yeah. So, so I, maybe you've went into great detail about this on your channel. We don't have to go into it, but yeah. you guys cross paths, and he's been he's been awesome for yeah, your channel. Yeah, yeah, he's a good dude, man. He's uh, and he's got his YouTube channel as well. Yeah, don't be Wiley is his channel, and he. Uh, so we met uh, when I when this. Will It Start stuff started taking off. I was like, well, how am I going to find more equipment? Because my father-in-law is running out of equipment. Yeah. And so I was like, well, let me look on Facebook Marketplace. Well, Wiley had something for sale. And so I contacted him. He said I could film it. We went. We had. We hit so it whenever you walk, Whenever you walked up there with the camera, I mean, I just imagined Wally the, like, what the, the heck? He said, I thought it was going to be like satellite dishes, big satellite <laughs> truck come, you know, big box man. You, know, <laughs> you are a little bit on camera. Yeah. yeah. Catering and all this, right? And I'm like, nope, just me, this old redneck with a camera, you yeah. know? And, uh, but we hit it off. Like, as soon as we met, we hit it off. And then he was like, well, you know, I, I, I have a bunch of old equipment and, and I flip old equipment for a living. So you can film all you want to. All right, I had to do a quick little battery change there, but you and, uh, so you and Wally just kind of hit it off. Just hit it off, and uh, he flipped equipment for a living, or still flips equipment for a living, and so he was like, I said, well, can I film the, another piece? And he's like, yeah. Well, my father-in-law, he didn't really care to be on YouTube. Yeah. And so he was like, have at it, you know what I mean? Because it was me and my father-in-law was start doing it to start with. And uh, so me and Wally just, just hit it off and started doing all this equipment, and he became... Yeah, it, it really, he became one of my best friends, to be yeah, honest with yeah. you. So he's a, he's a really good guy. Hey, you know, uh, I think that's one thing that separates your channel and my channel from some of the other ones is we bring other characters into the fold. Yeah. And within reason and with respect, you know, I try to get some of the customers on there if they want to. And sure. Try to show as many perspectives as I can, but honestly, it's, sometimes it's just fun to share it with your best friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And he... Uh, so, you know, I think the only reason he sticks around is because I buy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's smarter than we thought he was. Yeah, maybe he's smarter than we thought. But he's, you know, he's, he grew up logging. Yeah. So he knows all about, you know, all those old, old eat. Well, I think just and, his personality offsets your personality. Sure, the which yin makes yang it, type deal. Yeah, 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 which makes it, makes it work for sure. So. Yeah. No, it's pretty cool. We can't we can't have this whole podcast without talking about talking about him. Of course, yeah. No, he's a super good guy. I love that guy. So yeah. So basically, you've kind of you're thinking about pivoting that channel, maybe down the project route. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think you know, and to be honest with you, Matt will bring you back up. Uh, I, I watch Matt often, mm -hmm. and I see what he does, and yeah. evidently people are drawn to. They get invested in a piece of equipment that started. Correct, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we don't... But that the thing about it is, that's never been our stick. You know, our stick has always been, I'm going to find it on Marketplace, help it crank, and then help that person sell, sell it. it. right. You know, and... Uh, but, I, you know, we bought the tele... We bought a telehandler. I bought a telehandler and got it um, got it going and all that stuff. So that's one project. You know, the, and there's three or four pieces I want to try to tackle this year. And back to my grandbabies... 
they're getting old enough. My their my granddaughters are twins, and they're getting old enough to kind of get into things. And I really want to do a project with yeah. them. Yeah, well, I mean that's some awesome quality time, and they're learning life experiences. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I uh, we t- we talked a little bit off camera. You know, we're, that's one thing I everybody was always like, why do you got your shop at your house? Because my kids can be inside doing homework. They'll come out of the shop and piddle with me. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. It's so important. Even my even though my daughter will tell you on camera, she hates it. <laughs> she loves tinkering more than I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. It's yeah, it's yeah. and is it, and for me, it's just rewarding to watch them figure stuff out, do stuff, and and then it gives them the appreciation of a project. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm so, hoping I, I hope <clears> they. I'm hoping they at least do one with me and then yeah. realize that it's a pretty cool well, thing. Well, the other thing about YouTube for me is it documents your life. It does. So, yeah. you know, they'll be able to go back and look at these videos for right. 10, 15 years from now. <laughs> so it's so funny because they'll, they're at the age where they get embarrassed, like if their friends say, oh, I saw your grandpa on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> we went, my daughter plays travel volleyball, and we went and... Uh, we travel about three hours from the house because around home nobody bothers you. Yeah, of you're course. just yeah, you're yeah. just Hank. I'm yeah, just that's right. Same, same. Yeah. So we travel about two and a half hours from the house. Well, the first team we played, two of the dads of the girls on the other team recognized <laughs> me. <laughs> so I'm over there taking pictures, signing autographs, yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. "Yeah, number eight, that's my daughter," right. and she's over there like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is. It's funny, man. It's, it's uh, funny. and she's. Of course, she's 14 now, or almost 14, yeah. and she's to the point where she's really kind of realized what's going on oh, yeah, and yeah. how yeah. big a deal it is, but sure. she don't want to acknowledge it. That's right, yeah. And I'm to the point... Daddy's somebody now. Yeah, right? yeah. I, 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 I'm to the point, I'm like, uh, I'm kind of rubbing it in, you know, yeah, with her course. friends and everything, yeah. so... Yeah. I'm going to get way off subject, but she plays, <laughs> plays volleyball, so I set a volleyball court up for her in my shop, so yeah, she yeah. brought a couple of friends over, it was me against them. <laughs> Well, I won. Uh-oh. I beat them. Uh oh. <laughs> so they're calling all their friends, telling them all this crap about how uh, how how they won. So I set a camera up and didn't tell them. I played them again and uh, beat them. Uh oh. So then I uploaded it on YouTube. I sent them all a link. I said, "You keep telling everybody who yeah, won, yeah, yeah. or I'm gonna post yeah. this public." That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so I'm lying now. You gotta have fun with them. So. <laughs> but anyways, so basically, that's where the second channel come from, which is Hank Hamilton. Yeah. So the. Cause going back to where my tractor videos didn't do well. Right. Uh, I you built a total different audience you weren't intending on building. That's correct. <laughs> that, that's that's correct. I wasn't intending to go down that route, but um, but I love tractors. I mean, I love tractors. And uh, ever since I got my first one, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. You know. And so um, tractors went, are a great piece of equipment to learn how to operate on too, because they they teach you so many basics. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, you know, I wanted I wanted to go back to my roots, so to speak. So we started the Hank Hamilton channel, and I didn't tell, I didn't advertise it on the main channel at all because I didn't want all those guys. I didn't, you know, let's just say fifteen, twenty thousand of my loyal subscribers said, "Well, let me go support him on this channel." Just to, yeah, yeah, just to get my numbers up or whatever. I, and I didn't want that, right? Because I don't, you know, I don't care. And I don't mean this in a, a bad way. When I say I don't care, I do care, but I don't care if you don't subscribe. I just want you to, I want to entertain you and I want you to watch my videos. Right. And, uh, and I want you to leave my video laughing, maybe have learned something of what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if you hit that subscribe button or whatever, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not, you know, 340,000 subscribers is a lot of daggum people. Yeah, yeah, sometimes in this world, it's hard to quantify or put that into perspective, you know. I told somebody the other day, they're like, I got a video, got 100,000 views. They're like, that's it? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, do you realize that most NFL stadiums don't even see that many <laughs> yeah, people? No, no, yeah, if everybody, yeah, you it's know, crazy. It's like this, you know, a lot of my yeah. podcasts, the last few haven't done is get a lot of podcasts, get 10,000 views. That's it? That's yeah. like a college basketball game yeah 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 you know that's like that's a lot of people it's a lot of people yeah invite ten thousand people to your yeah. house yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> trust me you'll need more parking i yeah. promise so yeah, just yeah. just and I, and I always say that i'm not bragging or boasting just to put it in perspective that's right yeah you know those numbers are easily like just tossed around like they're nothing yeah and and, and that so but youtube overall it's, um, you know, we're down here with a group of YouTubers now, and we can have conversations because we kind of understand the full circle of it. But right. And there is negative that comes along with it. Sure. But what YouTube does as a whole is does a really good job of aligning like-minded people. All right. Some of my best friends now have come off YouTube. Yeah, yeah. 
um, whether they be other content creators or even even some subscribers or people like Clint that I got into YouTube. Now he's about ready to pass me, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. I can't be I can't be happier sure. for him. But uh, YouTube's been a net gain for me in a lot of different ways. Um, I guess your thoughts on well, I think. I think it's awesome because of the other creators that I have met, I would say 99% of them want you to succeed as your, yeah. as a buddy. You know I what I mean? I promise I'm not the 1%. Uh, no, he's not. He's not the 1%. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's reflection on society. There's going to be people. Yeah, there's that, always going to be. There's always going to be that few. But everybody that I, that I hang out with that are YouTube creators, you, Matt, uh, Wes, uh, whoever else, all, you know, all the tractor guys that I hang out with, they, we all want each other to succeed. Right. The internet is big enough for everybody. Oh, yeah. And, and what's good for one's good for all. Oh, yeah. High yeah. tides lift all boats, right? Yeah. And so so I think that's, that's the, some of, like you were saying, some really, really close friends now I've met through YouTube. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. And, you know, we... We speak the same language. We, uh, you know, we can share ideas about. Hey, do you think this would work? You think that would work? You know, and you know, sometimes, it, hopefully, you get a, a good enough buddy that will be like, dude, that's a dumb idea. You know, <laughs> 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 you know, and this kind of keeps you in check. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's it's YouTube's pretty cool community. It is, man. It is a very, very, very cool community, uh, and I. I I mean, I'm rooting for YouTube success more than anybody, and I think it'll it's going to stick around for a long time to come, sure, especially oh yeah. with the way, Our life especially with everything's changing and trending. It's I never, I never, ever, ever got into YouTube to make money right. or to become famous. Yeah, um, I think that's the number one mistake you can make whenever you start a YouTube channel. If you're trying to start a YouTube channel to make a money or be famous, oh yeah, forget you it. You are not going to yeah. make it. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie, I do enjoy the money now, but I would still do the exact same thing I'm doing for a lot less money. Yeah, yeah. And the the, the notoriety is nice from times, but it's sometimes I just like to go hide in the corner and bid on some of the yeah. auction and nobody see me. Yeah. But don't take me wrong, guys. I appreciate everybody that watches yeah, yeah. and come up and see us if you do. But there's also... Um, there's also a difference, and you and I are on different sides of the line on this. You technically YouTube for a living. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Like yeah. I run a full time business and video what I can. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I guess my wife tells me that too. She's like, "That's your full time job." And yeah. I guess I just don't feel like it's my yeah. full time job yeah. because I I, or, I enjoy well, it. Well, or is here's the other option. If you're like me, you're embarrassed to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, I just have so much fun doing it, and but but I'm you know as a retired military guy. You know, I've got my pension, my right, health right, benefits, right. and all that stuff. So if I quit YouTube tomorrow, who cares? Right. You know what I mean? So. And I'm kind of in the same boat. If YouTube, I don't, you know, YouTube could change one regulation and we're out. Oh, I know it. Yeah. And, and I still got the excavating business. I yeah, mean, I'll be yeah. just fine. I'll move on. So I, I do, I do, I mean, I just, I love YouTube. I love making videos. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and but I'm, I'm with you. I don't, you know, it's. The, the notoriety and all that stuff, don't care none about that. You know what I mean? I, to be honest with you, I just want to entertain people. Right. That's what I want to do. I, and I want you to feel good after you watch a video of mine. Yeah. You know, I had uh, Logger Wade, which is my neighbor, and I, I've spoke about this a little bit before on the channel. He was the one that really pushed me into doing it. And I had to justify stuff in my head, you know, and I had a few yeah. different reasons that justified me to do it. One, it was a way to document my life. Yeah. You know, my dad got killed. Uh, before we got all kinds of still pictures of him running equipment, no videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, man, how cool would it be to document everything yeah, I'm doing? Even sure. if nobody watches it, I'm documenting. <laughs> the other thing is, we do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And you do. Yeah. Just being able to share that with people and and toss ideas back and forth and stuff. There's no better place to do it. Yeah. Than, uh, oh, absolutely. I mean, well, you're getting literally worldwide. Yes. And, I, and then I'm a busy guy. Yeah. I need a hobby. Like, I shut down two businesses. I thought I had all this free time. Well, this is my new hobby. <laughs> and uh, obviously, my hobby's kind of taken up. But I've tried really hard to keep it a hobby. I think that shows yeah. on the channel. Yeah. But the other thing is, I never intended this to be an educational channel. But being self-employed, like, 
Here's yeah. why I had to charge you a three hour minimum. I yeah, may have showed up on your job for an hour, but I spent half the day getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's why my hourly rates are so much, because I have to pay for this big insurance bill over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, here's why the alley rate's so much, because here we are in the shop spending 20 grand on an yeah. undercarriage, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people appreciate that, because it's stuff they don't think about. I say all the time, I watch aviation videos as my guilty passion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, why the hell do they do that? <laughs> watch, I'm like, oh. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, did, I didn't think that all the way through. So it, I always just tell, I'm, I'm going way around the corner to tell everybody to watch with an open mind. Yeah, that's true. And we, we do, and we're 180 from that because every time we go to do a piece of equipment or whatever, the first question or one of the main questions that they ask is, how much is it going to cost me? And yeah. my answer is zero. You yeah. know what I mean? I said, hey, I'm going to make my money through the video. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm not going to buy you an undercarriage. But yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, if it needs, you know, filters and stuff like that, I got you, man. It's no big yeah. deal. Yeah. And so, but that's part of my nature as a, as a person is I like helping people. Right. I like blessing people. And so, uh, you know, if I can get a piece of equipment running where they're going to all, let's say they got a piece of equipment and they got it for sale for 2000 well, we get it running, change filters and oils and all that. Now they can sell it for five thousand or something. Well, that's yay, yay for them. Yeah. I don't need any of that. It just it makes me happy that they're able they they had the potential to get more money for it. Right. Know? So everybody's got a debt gain. Everybody, yeah, yeah. I get the video. They get the uh, right. you know bigger price tag. So, well, Hank, man, I appreciate you taking the time. So oh, yeah, talk with it's us. my pleasure, actually. You know, the whole point of the podcast channel is just to kind of go into. Uh, it's hard to do this on a main channel. Yeah, yeah. Because you're gonna have your you're gonna have your core people that really enjoy uh, the ins and outs of it, and you got you guys who just want to watch. So, podcast channel has been been pretty good for us. I think, I, like I said before, I like listening to the interviews you do. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. we've got some good ones with uh, Wes and Matt and Chris yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, I even got Chris to co-host a few of them. Yeah, yeah. But, well, those uh, are the ones I don't watch. But. <laughs> So I told him, not to change the subject, but I told him today, we were walking by excavator. I said, listen, man, if you, if you need any tips or tricks, man, <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> uh, Everybody wants me and Chris to compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. And, and of course, don't get me wrong. We have a lot of fun, a lot of fun competing. But at the end of the day, we're just good friends. That's right. You yeah. know, is what, is what it comes buddies, down to. And, so. and then this, this is your first time meeting Clint from CNC Equipment. It's right? my first time meeting Clint. Yeah, yeah he's, so. he's the real act. deal. He's the real deal. Yeah, I enjoyed my conversation yeah. with him. So. Yeah, he's the real deal. Yeah, he's become a really good friend. Uh, we actually knew each other outside of YouTube. And unfortunately, YouTube forces us to be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Forces us to be friends. But yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah, that's the way to... Grown ass men should act. You know, we have oh, differences. Yeah. We sat down, we figured it out. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're both in better places, uh, both in better places from it. So, anyways, I'm glad you made the trip to this side of Florida. We've been talking about doing this for two years. I know. <laughs> I'm glad it happened. Because ironically, you're traveling to my neck of the woods here at the end of the yep, week. I'll see you again next week. Yeah, uh, Farm Machinery Show. I ain't yeah. seen you in a year and see you twice I, I in know, a week. Lucky me. Uh, it's crazy how that works <laughs> out. So, hope you guys enjoyed listening, watching, whatever you're doing. Like I said, you got any. Uh, Got any ideas, future guests, a few points from perfects, yahoo.com. Thanks again, Hank. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me.